Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can keep form values like this while navigating in between different pages. I recently created a video on how you can pass form data like this over into a new page and have it render in some text. So you can see I was able to submit my first and last name and you can render it within any block of text. So like I said, I just recently created that video. I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. And I'm also going to leave a card up here to that video. So in this example, I wanted to make sure the user won't lose their submitted form data in case they made a spelling mistake or needed to go back and update that data. So as you can see, when you click this go back button, my first and last name is going to be saved on this page right here. The way you pull this off is just using some pretty simple JavaScript to save this form data as a session storage. And later in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how all of this works and how you can check if your session storage is actually being saved inside the Chrome browser. So let's just jump into the back end. And here we are on the back end of that Elementor page. And as you can see, I just have a simple form. And then right down here is where all the magic is going to be happening. And this is just using an HTML widget with this little bit of JavaScript. So the very first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is name each one of your input fields. So in this case, I just have really simple first name and last name form fields. And what you need to do is underneath each one of your form fields, go underneath advanced and give it a unique ID right here. So in this case, I'm calling my first name, just the ID first name and last name. I'm calling it just last name. So it's really good to make sure you keep these things organized and clean. Next, what we're going to do is you just need to drop in an HTML widget and paste in this JavaScript. And of course, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can go to our website and download this script. And once you paste that in there, you just have to change out a few different areas. Uh, the very first one is you need to change out these right here where it says form field, first name and last name. So these are the ones I just showed you. And you need to make sure you update it right here. And then also I have these values right down here. So as you can see, each one of these lines is kind of commented out so you can kind of understand what's going on. The way it works is first, this script is gonna see if there's any session storage and if it exists, populate it right here. And then this chunk of code right down here is going to save that session storage to your browser. So if you're not familiar with how Elementor works with these form fields, uh, it's pretty cool. So what Elementor does is it gives each one of these form fields is uh, its own unique ID. So in this case, they call it form field. And then this is the name of that first field. And then we just need to use JavaScript to say, get that value and that form field. And here's the ID. So it's pretty simple. Like I said, if you have more of these, so if you have four other, you know, or two other things, you could just copy and paste that two other times and just change out here and here. And then you're going to want to make sure you also save it out right here. So once you have all of that saved, I'm going to show you how you can check to make sure this session storage is actually being saved inside the browser. And here we are on the front end of that page. So let me just enter in my first name and last name. And you may notice I'm actually in an incognito window. Uh, what I've noticed is sometimes when you're logged into WordPress and you start to mess around with these JavaScript uh, session storages, sometimes they don't get saved correctly. So what I recommend is making sure that you're not logged into the website while you're doing this type of test. So once you uh, put in your values right here, what you're going to want to do, uh, in my example, I'm in Chrome. So I'm just going to hit F12 and that's going to open up all of your different um, inspect tools and dev tools right here. And what we're going to want to do is make sure that you're on this one called application. So what's going to happen is when I hit the send button, it's going to send a key and the values of this session, which would be my first name and last name, is going to save it right here. So watch what happens in this uh, table right here when I hit send. So you're going to see right here, it says form data. And then this right here is my first name is Mark. Last name is Crowell. And if I hit this go back button, what it's going to do is go back to this page and that JavaScript code we have, it, what it's doing is it's looking to see if there's a session uh, key called form data, and then it's going to automatically populate these two fields. And if I send it again, it's just going to keep it and you can always go back. So this is good because I know that you've probably been to forms before you made a mistake and you need to be able to go back and edit those fields. Well, that's how you fix this type of uh, problem is using a session storage within JavaScript. It's a few extra steps, but what I do recommend is if you're ever doing anything like this where you're passing data from one page to another, it's not a bad idea to always just add this little bit of JavaScript. 
I'm also going to include this code right here for this go back button. This is just using a simple JavaScript. And what it's doing is it's first in HTML, we're just going to have a button on click, go back. And then this script right here is just JavaScript saying, okay, go back to the very last page the user was just on. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure that you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.